It's time for another device review. Welcome to Talk and Chalk. This is my channel where I share my tips and advice on anything education related and today we're going to get into some technology. I know this video is going to be long so I'm going to try and get into this intro section or through this intro section pretty quickly so that we can get to the juicy stuff. So not long ago I was approached by a lovely rep at Microsoft to review a particular device that is being rolled out in classrooms just to see what I thought about it. Pros, cons, absolute raw honesty and just to see what I liked about it and would I find it functional and usable in the classroom and of course I said yes I would love to look at another device most of you know I currently use a Surface Pro so I was very keen to see what this one was and it was only referred to as the shiny red laptop so I was expecting I really wanted something glittery but that's okay it was shiny and red anyway so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys the specs of what it was and then I'm going to show you some video that I've been taking over the last oh, three or four weeks while I've been sort of playing around with the device. So it's the HP ProBook X360 and just to give you, this is the specs of the T4L device catalogue. So if you're not in my teaching system, you might not know what I'm talking about, but the specs of the computer, it's a 11.6 inch HD LED touch display. It's got an Intel Pentium. Uh, N4200 processor, 4 gig of RAM, uh, it's got 120 gig 8 um, SSD, it's got a micro SD card reader, it's got one user facing uh, camera that's 720p and one world facing camera that's 1080p, um, it's got Bluetooth, yeah, it's, if it's, it's a T4L device it's got Windows 10 on there, so it's up to 10.5 hours battery. And there's photo and video editing on there, there's, you can use it for robotics, coding, web conferencing, it's got G Suite, Office 365. Um, it, it is these particular devices T4L built and managed, so they're ready for NAPLAN online. Uh, it's got the stylus, uh, the Minecraft education, it's STEM share capable, carry bag, and it's got the two year NBD on site warranty. There's some other specs in there as well, but that will take a while to go through it. And I'm sure if you're keen on it, you'll go and look at those up yourself. So um, I just want to state outright as well, this is not a paid promotion. I had to give the device back, which is why I don't currently have it with me at the moment, but you'll see it in the other videos that I've taken. Um, this was just about sharing and exploring and getting honest feedback. And I'm lo I love being part of that process because I know that um, Microsoft will take the advice of teachers on board and make modifications where they think suitable because they want their devices to be user friendly for our kids and ultimately they want those devices to enhance the learning of our students. So that was why I wanted to participate in this. So the first thing I wanted to do, priorities, was listen to some music. So I chucked on some Spotify, I just wanted to play around with the um, the browser and see what I could get out of it. So I obviously I went to Spotify and just played some music, but unfortunately I can't actually play the video with the music on here because then I get like copyright infringements for using someone else's video. But this is what it looks like. And yes, I do assure you the, the audio was great. So I literally stuck it, this, it was here, you can see, and I had the music going just while I was doing washing and, you know, sorting out clothes and stuff. And it was, it was great. Easy to listen to, I could, you know, the volume soft, I could do volume loud, easy, user friendly, not a problem. So that was a nice easy way to sort of get started with it. Um, I did use it to take some videos with my kids, so if you don't know, my kids have their own little YouTube channel that they use to share videos, which is usually just with friends and family. So my daughter did a cooking video, which was really cute, so here's some scenes from that. Today, I will be making devil's food cake, and after we finish cutting it out, we can put it on the bottom of the pan. Be very careful with this because... This could spell on your bench. The camera was easy to use. She did that herself. I did the editing part um, because she's not used to doing that yet. But in terms of the functionality, she could press play. She could press, sorry, record. She could press record. She could press stop. And she knew where to go to view the video to see if she was happy with what she had filmed. So in terms of a child using it, simple as. Uh, I wanted to 
use the screen capturing system on there and just play around with Minecraft education. My son loves Minecraft. He um, hasn't played around with the education version before, so I just logged on as myself and he took some video. So I set up the screen capture just using PowerPoint and he we talked through it. So one little thing that I wasn't too crash hot about was the fact that if I was a little bit away from the device you couldn't really hear my voice. He was close to it though so you could hear it. We weren't using fancy mics or anything like that which I'm assuming you're not going to have in the classroom anyway. So if you want kids recording something on it they're going to have to make sure they're speaking clearly at a good volume and they're a good distance to the device. So I mean if they want to film something that's far away you would need to have a microphone. So I'll show you some scenes from that and you'll, you'll hear his voice and my vo voice and, um, and you'll see the difference. Now guys, we're going to build a pyramid. So uh, let's find a spot. So I think that's the spot where we're going to build. So uh, first, let's get some... Uh, Sandstone stairs, and then let's make uh, four kilometers of the stairs here. One. So uh, let's make a door hole. Yeah. Is this easy to do? Mm -hmm. Yes, I like that. And then also we're going to make emerald and diamond floor. Mm -hmm. What does that say? <clears throat> Is that pyramids to awaken the really good? So great quality though like the picture's clear my son's voice is absolutely clear um and the best part was it was really easy for him to use so my son has a few fine motor things that he's working on he sees an ot and i love the fact that he could just manage everything on there and he was going to a different device he's used it on the xbox before um but this was new having it on a touch screen like that so i'm going to show you some video of him using it just so you can see how easy it was for him to use so, uh, let's make a door hole. Yeah? Is this easy to use? Mm hmm Yeah, you like it? And then also we're going to make emerald and diamond floor. Mm hmm To use with. <laughs> so that's just him on the bed, which happens to be here, <laughs> by the way. Um, and he managed that fine. He really enjoyed it. He didn't like the fact that I wasn't letting him use the laptop more often, actually. He really wanted to play with it some more. And I love the fact, like I said, it was user-friendly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip to video that I took after a couple of weeks of using the device. And I'm going to um, share that with the point of just going, this was me in the moment, just with everything that was going through my head in terms of what I had learned about the device and how I felt about it. So I've had the shiny red laptop for a few weeks now and I think I just want to record my thoughts just as they unfold, as they go through and explore the device. Shiny red laptop, it's so fun. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is just talk about the things that, that I like, wearing my teacher hat, wearing what I tried to put on as my student hat and just some of the things that I discovered that were, you know, not so functional or things that were really, really great. So I haven't even turned it on for the video yet because I just want to show you some features. So it's pretty slim line. It's lightweight. It's, you know, I didn't throw it around to jump on it or anything like that. But I mean, I, I grabbed a case, just a random case, and I've got the charger in here. And this is really lightweight and easy to use. So that's a pro right there. I mean, we don't want big clunky things in the classroom. So when I, I first got this, I, I was shown sort of some of the bare basics of it. Um, and, you know, as soon as you open it up, you realize that obviously I'm opening at the wrong end. That looks really qualified, doesn't it? Um, 
it looks like a standard laptop no different than probably most of the ones we've got in our classrooms at the moment um, straight away I had a downfall though there's nowhere to actually attach the pen and it's not magnetic either the pro of the Surface Pro was that I could just to the side and not a problem so this one here like I just, I just really want to make it work it's just not sticking on there and there's no slot there's nowhere to slot it's literally separate so that in a classroom is just gonna get lost in the first week maybe even the first day so I would really really like it if there was an attachment on there for for that so that you know it wasn't lost because the pen's got heaps of good features so I'm keeping that in front of me for the moment so like I said really lightweight really easy one of the great things about this was dun, 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 dun. I love that I don't know why that impresses me so much but it does and I like the fact that it doesn't have to be removed so you know some of those devices you know iPads or whatever you've got those keyboard functions where it pops up on the screen but then you lose half the screen and kids are typing away and it's not really that natural typing motion that they get and I love the fact that it's still there it's not a separate piece it doesn't have to be charged there's no Bluetooth or anything like that I can still use it like a tablet um, even though the keyboard is still connected so one thing that you'll notice on here too is you've got I don't know if you can see it. Wow, my screen is really dirty. I probably should have cleaned that before this, shouldn't I? <laughs> anyway, that it shows that I've been using it. Um, this the camera is just at the top here. And what you'll find is that there's not one here like there normally would. So it's not like you can stand it like this and you know I'm at a conference and I want to record something or I'm in the classroom and I want to take a photo of something. When you flip this around, it's right here. So there's your keyboard. It's down there and at first I thought this was weird and it would be a pain in the backside but then I realized as a student in a classroom it's so much better so you know as a teacher if I, like I said if I'm at a conference and I want to take a picture of something I don't want to have to lift everything up and turn it around take a picture that would be really really annoying but I'm thinking of this device more for students and in the classroom I don't want them walking around like this holding on to just the screen which is what they do they pick up the screen and then they walk around like this to try and take a photo of something because they're so used to having tablets or, or those other devices so I like the idea of them typing away and going hey I want to take a picture of something let's do it like this I can get a good grip on it I can hold it properly and then I can take a photo using this camera just here so I just think that's so much more functional for kids anyway so having these in the classroom that's so much better for kids so what I'm going to do is turn it on and show you how long it takes to power up. So I've just pressed the button there and I did charge this today while I was at work. I did push the button. There we go. It's coming on now. And it doesn't take too long to load up and considering, you know, what our kids are doing in the classroom, it's definitely faster than the standalone computers. Um, and once it loads up, the screen is not exactly the same as it would be if it were a, a student device. This has been set up in a way so that I can try and test a bunch of stuff that I'm keen on. So I've got the departmental apps on here. It's still coming on. And then there we go. So now I can log on, which I'm not going to show you guys the password to. And when this, um, oh, there we go. When this loads up, so you'll see on there, I have saved a few things to the screen, just random things that I've been playing with. But you can see it looks like a looks like a normal screen. It's got good quality. It's a bit hard, I think, for you guys to sort of see there because of the, the type of screen that it is with the reflection and everything. And I'm hoping you're not seeing like a pile of washing or something in the reflection there. I'll keep it moving around so you can't tell. <laughs> so same thing again though. If if I do flip this around, it'll ask me if I want to go into tablet mode. And I'm going to say yes. And then it'll look sorry, it'll look like that in tablet mode. So this is something that our kids know what these look like. If they've been using any of those devices, they can do it. And then you can whoops, use the touch screen to do that. So if I go into, what's something I can go into for you guys? Um, oh, here we go, Microsoft Whiteboard. So this is one of the apps that I downloaded for the device. And from memory, oh no, I don't want to do updates now. Um, get started. So from memory, this was a departmental app, I think, um, and you can um, collaborate 
on this as well. So I'm just going through the startup prompts and I'm going to close that. Oh, it wants me to sign in. Sorry. Continue. It's signing me in at the moment so I can get into it. Apologies if I'm going up and down and up and down, but that's just the way it is. So now you've got this whiteboard on there, literally a whiteboard, and this is where I can use my pen. I'm not left-handed. Let me move this around. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> this is really weird. So, oops. Oh, the bottom is not a rubber. That's force of habit, and that's something I think needs to be improved, but you have your rubber devices on there. Hello! And you know what I like about this? I can, I'm just going to go back to the eraser and get rid of all of that. I'm going to go back to a pen now. And if I'm a child that likes to lean on it, whoops, me leaning on the screen didn't actually do anything to draw on it like some of those other ones do. So um, I think that's really good for some of our kids who have got those fine motor issues as well, um, who will all, they could never sort of do things because their hand touching on something would be sensed and then it would prevent them from, you know, operating it the way that you really want them to operate it. So that function I really like. Now I'm going to come out of tablet mode just by bringing it back around and it'll ask me, do I want to exit tablet mode? Yes, I do want to exit. I'm just going to move this back around the other way and you'll see it hasn't really changed because it's all in that app and I'm going to close that now. So I'll go into something that I'm sure most of you are keen to see and that is OneNote. It's a Microsoft device so it's been set up with some Microsoft apps in there and when you go into the, the app it looks like it's the, it's the online version so it might look it, it does look different to some of the other videos that I've done and at the moment it's actually opened up into the teaching program that I was in last time and I'm just making sure there's no names on here so you can't see anything so I'll just go into um, okay so that's a doughy link that's a fine so you'll see like I've got all the tabs on the side that just go across and then that's the actual space that I'm working in so we wrote notes from a meeting that we attended and oh here we go it's actually in there so I used it to type some type some notes onto the side here and I used the pen to write some just annotations on there as well and this was me so I had it upright like this type 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 and then when I decided I wanted to put some notes on there I flipped it around and just started writing and it was really easy to use it meant that the papers that we all had on the table, um, you know, didn't need to sort of, they, they could take up more space because I had lost half of my space pretty much and was just writing and could see everything in front of me. And I think that would be really beneficial for a lot of our kids in the classroom where we don't want them to lose this motion. We don't want them to stop writing. And if they can easily interchange between the two, I think that's a life skill we really want to move into. Some of our kids, do this for a certain period of time and then later we'll do this for a certain period of time and when they get into high school I, I'm assuming it would chop and change between uh, periods throughout the day and so I would love that idea that this can interchange naturally so that if they are suddenly moving over to write a note and not use a device it's a natural movement um, in between the two from an OT standpoint I could be completely wrong I don't know if you're an OT and you're watching this please correct me um, but I just thought that was really, really beneficial. Now, there's a lot of other features on here that I discovered. So what I'm going to do, though, is so that you can see it properly, is I will flip the phone around because I'd like you to see me using the whole thing um, and just show you a couple of the other features. So going into your standard functions in here, you know, you've got your same screen like normal. It's easy to navigate like usual. And you can pin things to the, the, the task bar or to the startup bar. Those things are easy on there. We've got Minecraft Education, uh, Movie Maker is on there. Uh, I recommend, you know, you just get your standard things like Sway and, you know, Word and Excel and all those sorts of things that you use um, and just have them there ready to go. They all work exactly 
the same, just the updated versions. It's really easy to use. Up here, there is a dictate function. So if you go to the drop down arrow on that, you've got your different languages there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll down to an empty space and show you how it works. So I've just tapped on the screen. I'm going to click dictate. Hello, everybody. Check out me writing. Full stop. Too easy, isn't it, guys? Full stop. Full stop. And I've just clicked it to turn it off. So I think that's a great function for some of our kids that might need support. I think that's great for when you're not in the mood to type <laughs> and you just want to put notes down. Um, I just think that's a good function. Now there is a read aloud function as well. So I'm going to go into Edge, uh, which is the, the standard browser in here. And I've pulled up The Raven, one of my favorite poems. We're not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to highlight this particular text here because if I don't highlight it, it will read everything on this page, like about us, events, etc. So if I go up to the top here, oops, I'll just click on that properly. Down here, you'll see read aloud. So have a listen. The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, now when you want to stop napping, it, you can just click there... at the top there. And if you go into settings, you can change how it sounds. So that's just the one that I've left it on at the moment. But again, you could see where it highlighted the text. You could see the words. Uh, you know, this is great if you have found a website that kids can follow. They can read along with it. They can put a set of headphones on. Or if you've got any students that are sight impaired and they're finding the text too small on the screen, uh, you know, they can use that. Or, obviously, we can always zoom in and make it insanely big but just the variety on there makes it so much better. So far the battery on battery life on this has been really good. Uh, Hubby and I were both using it the other day um, just to do some various things and test it out and I think we were using it for about, it was four hours I think we were using it for until it decided to tell us that it wanted to be plugged in, which I think is better than the other devices that I've been using. And you know, our kids aren't, or well, they shouldn't be using them for four hours straight every single day in the classroom. So I think that would easily last without having to be constantly charged all the time. I'm actually just gonna click shut down on this. Uh, and who wants to do an update? Um, so those are just, you know, random thoughts I've got on it at, at the moment. And um, as I go deeper into it, I guess I'll, I'll figure out some more. Already, I think it's easier to use than the current um, laptops we've got in our classrooms. The great thing about it is the touch screen because I look like the dopey teacher in the classroom that says, just touch on this one. And they're like, it's not a touch screen, miss. And I'm the one saying, <laughs> it's force of habit. Um, you'd think the younger ones would be so used to their screens, but now I, I've become ingrained in, in doing it that way as well. But I mean, you can see I'm just I'm, like, it's easy to use. It's easy to use in my lap. Um, and, you know, you put this on the table, move it around the classroom. I just um, find it really easy to use at the moment. So um, once I've used it a little bit more, then maybe I'll have a bit more detail. So you can see in the short time that I've had it, I've probably only scratched the surface of all the amazing things that those devices can do. Ultimately, end result, I don't know that this would be a device that I would get for myself in terms of how my general day-to-day -day functions and the reasons that I use a device. I'm constantly moving and on the go. I love the fact that it was sturdy. I'm very confident I probably could have dropped that and it would have been fine. Um, however, it just some of those things would, I guess, inhibit the way that I like to interact with my device in terms of what I do every day. For students though, I would absolutely recommend it. There were just so many pros, so many benefits to that particular device 
for students, for kids, um, even for our you know older students in high school, I think this would be highly beneficial, this device. Just the applications that it had, the functionality of it, it was just really, really useful. So I definitely recommend that this would be a device for classrooms and at my school, we've got a class set now and we're going to be using that with some of our students and just seeing how they actually respond to it. You know, it's one thing for me to respond to it and my own children to respond to it, but it will be interesting to see how it works functionality wise in a classroom. So I'm really looking forward to seeing them in action though. So if you thought this was useful or beneficial, or if you have this device, give this video a thumbs up. I appreciate you watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'm going to put my button down the bottom there. You just hover over that and click to subscribe. I'll chuck another video at the top there and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye.